This is going to be an updated video for me because I talked about Kyle Pitts after week three when I thought he wasn't being utilized properly and he wasn't being targeted enough and they weren't getting him in the offense involved like I thought they should. He was only being targeted a couple times a game and is averaging around 40 or so yards a game and there was just no creativity in his game. Well, flash forward to the present day with one week left and he is the first tight end to reach a thousand yards in his rookie year since Mike Ditka in 1961. He also broke Julio's franchise record record and has quietly had an insane and historic rookie season and I still don't think they're using him to his full potential yet and we're going to go over that when we look in some film but I want to show you guys some comparisons to other tight ends in the league and show you why this is so incredible because the tight end position is unique because not many rookies do all that well we see rookie running backs receivers and quarterbacks have great rookie years but hardly ever tight ends this is because the nuance of being a tight end takes a while to fill in the role properly it's the physicality and the schemes in the run game and being equally a part of the passing game which usually is being the quarterback security blanket and really sharing a mind with the quarterback and you know exactly when and where the ball is going to be coming in and this takes time and reps and usually a couple years into the league well let's look at some of the all-time greats in our game right now and let's look at their rookie seasons and they also played a full season as well Rob Gronkowski, he only had 546 yards in 2010, and I would say that ended up going pretty well. Mark Andrews only had 552 yards, and he didn't break 1,000 yards until this season in his fourth year. George Kittle only had 515 yards, and Travis Kelsey was the next most impressive with 862, but this was kind of his second year because he missed his entire rookie season due to injury and why I still think he could be used more because if he's already putting up the numbers that these guys are putting up this season, Kyle Pitts has only been targeted 10 plus time once and it was 10 targets and he's getting targeted around six and a half times per game. Travis Kelsey has been targeted 10 plus times six times and he's played in one less game. He's being targeted around 8.6 times per game. Mark Andrews has been targeted 10 plus times seven times, 8.6 again. And Darren Waller has only had had 21 less targets than Kyle Pitts and has played in six less games. But after all that is said, there's still a ton of great stuff that you could get from this season and things that I still think they can improve on from an offensive scheme. So I want to go over some film with you. So let's get right into it. So the first clip I want to show you guys is actually something that Kyle Pitts was pretty bad at early on in the season. But I want to show you this because I want to show you that he very quickly started to change it. And a lot of his not success in the first couple games of the year was because of schemes. But he's also grown a lot as a player. So here he is at the top of the screen. And he's going to have this in route here trying to pick up the first down. And we have the mic. He's going to drop back into his zone. And we have a corner. He's going to drop back into his zone right here. And so I want to show you what it means to be a friendly tight end. Now for quarterbacks, tight ends are your best friends, but tight ends have to be quarterback friendly. And this is exactly what I mean. So Kyle Pitts has to realize that this is a zone. He sees the linebacker zone dropping and not playing man to man. And so right now he needs to find this open space. What he needs to do is he needs to lock eyes with Matt Ryan and show them that I'm going to settle down right here in the soft spot in the zone and we're going to convert this first down. I know my route is supposed to take me across the field, but I'm going to be friendly to you because I'm not going to throw you into danger. That's not what he does. He keeps running his route as normally. So Matt Ryan throws it like he's running it and it ends up being very, very close. I mean, look at all this room. He could have just sat and hunkered down right there and that's exactly what he needs to do. And I want to show you a few clips because just two weeks Weeks later, he does a brilliant job of this. And now we can see just two weeks later against the Dolphins, this was his breakout game where he had 163 yards. You're going to see him come on the left side of your screen right here. This is going to be a play action, and he runs a 4-4, which we're going to see. But as you see Kyle Pitts coming in here right on the left side, he is going to be in no rush because at the beginning of the play, he's going to do like this little crossing route. You saw those two high safety. He's not going to sprint right into the safeties, but you also know that this linebacker has to respect the run, so he's going to be sucked back in. And this is what being a quarterback friendly receiver is all about he's hunkering down right now because he sees a soft spot in the zone right now he's locking eyes with Matt Ryan and all his body language is telling him that he's hunkering down he's gonna find the soft spot in the zone and that's exactly what he does because if he would have kept running or if he would have sprinted way too far across the field or up the field and his full speed that's not always what you have to do you have to be a smart quarterback friendly receiver 
And we're going to see that again with Pitts right now. He's going to have an option route. He's going to push up the field. There's a lot of contact. And you're going to see he's even going to do like a veteran little cheeky push off. Because there was so much contact up the field, I think he'd get away with it. So he's going to have an option route on which way he's going to want to read the field or whether it's just a stick route. But you'll see how this goes. So immediately there is a ton of contact. And I don't think the ref's really going to call this. But Kyle Pitts knows that he's going to be able to get this little shove off and it's not going to get called. But his eyes lock with Matt Ryan. He knows he's covered completely right now he knows the defenders he's aware of his surroundings so he's gonna scoot over to the right block eyes with him body contact says I'm sitting right in the zone and this is how you pick up the first downs this is the connection that Brady's had with Gronk Mahomes has with Travis Kelsey and Jimmy Garoppolo has with George Kittle just be able to lock eyes show your body language and even though it's not the exact route that was called know where the open zone especially in zone coverages where tight ends can really attack it but not always you're gonna get zone coverage you're gonna be in man coverage and this is where Kyle Pitts truly excels and we're going to see that in these next few clips. Now Kyle Pitts is 6'6 and this corner is not that big but there's not that much of a speed difference. In fact Kyle Pitts is going to outrun him stride for stride. This is just so Megatron-esque. I mean you when you have a big body guy like this when you're 6'6 plus you're going to be winning jump balls you're being doing you're going to box them out with your body. How about just straight out beating them with straight speed and then making a one-handed grab down the sidelines. This is incredible. He stretches the field out vertically so well and as he's been proved along the season been able to pick apart the zones in the middle of the field you cannot leave him one on one and we're going to see that a few more times. And again, if you're going to run a one high safety, he's going to run this out of the slot. And this is something I need to point out why I don't even think he's close to his potential because yeah, they'll put him on the outside out here. Right now he's in the slot. They'll have him like play tight end or some sort of H back or on the solo side. Like they do a good job of like moving him around. They hardly ever motion him. I've seen it just a few times in all the film I watch in him. They just refuse. Like, Falcons, it is not illegal to send Kyle Pitts in motion. You watch Travis Kelsey, George Kittle, like, all these guys, all your best players, and, yep, that's just going to be him making him bigger, giving him, Matt Ryan, a huge target to throw to. I mean, this is not an easy throw, but when you have such a height advantage and you have a guy that has the vertical he does, he has the speed he does, this has become such an easy throw, and it's a clear mismatch, and you you just can't let it happen but again I would love to see and this was a catch I know he dropped on the way down but it was confirmed to catch but I would absolutely love to see the Falcons just be a lot more creative with their play calling especially in the red zone is something I want to address he has over a thousand yards he only has one touchdown is one touchdown there was like a defensive lineman guarding him it's ridiculous they need to be way more creative with him in the red zone this is why the title or the thumbnail of the video is going to be he had this historic season which I don't think anyone even knew about or not as many people as they should have knew about everyone's talking about Jamar Chase or all these rookie quarterbacks Mac Jones Micah Parsons Kyle Pitts had a historic season and he's not even close to his potential yet scheme wise and learning the game as a tight end which is really hard to do and as you see the all-time greats don't get it done right away but how about right over the top when you even when you have a safety over the top the concentration just to beat the corner straight up man to man and then the concentration with a safety coming he's know he's going to take contact but just to grab it in the vertical threat that he provides as a 6'6 person that runs a 4'4 is incredible and makes him so dynamic but also being able to pick apart the zones and him and Matt Ryan getting on the same page throughout the season has why he has the numbers he does and he has great hands too he just goes out and reaches for the ball this is the last one I'm going to show you this is going to be an option route this is going to be alert but what he's going to do is he's going to release out and he's going to attack the field he's going to see the safety drop over the top he's going to beat the man that's originally on him I believe it's Jabril Peppers but he's going to turn this into a sail route this is going to be an X alert this is what the Falcons offense likes to run a lot and so get, seeing him and Matt Ryan on the same page on this makes me so excited for Falcons in the future because this is going to be an incredible connection for however Matt long Matt Ryan's going to be there. Honestly, we don't know. But right here, look, at he has a beautiful release. He's pushing up the field. Jabril Peppers is not really on him. He sees the one or the two high safety is going to be over the top. So he's going to cut this off short into a sail route. And this is just a beautiful connection.
So after all of that, you can just see how immensely talented Kyle Pitts is and how just insane he's able to stretch the field vertically. But there's a few things I'd still want to change. Can somebody call the Falcons and tell them that motion is legal? You can put Kyle Pitts in motion if you want to. It's not illegal. You're not going to get a penalty. It's okay. And that happens so much. If you throw in a Chiefs game, you're going to see Travis Kelsey all the time crossing the field, doing a short motion, going from front to back, left to right, lining up in the backfield. All this creativity is just getting your best player on offense in these advantageous spots and you're starting out running the ball or in motion and any sort of confusion you can cause the defense. You already have a stud on offense and this just makes it even better. The next thing is uh, my biggest problem is he only has one touchdown this year. Their lack of creativity in the red zone with him has been unbelievable. This guy is 6'6". He's a huge target. He runs quick, short routes. He attacks the ball in the air. All of this just screams double digit touchdowns in a season and he only has one I blame the Falcons on this they need to be a lot more creative and target him a lot more design plays to get Kyle Pitts the ball in the end zone I think they'd be a lot more successful and I think we realized more as the season went on how much more quarterback friendly he's been but it's really interesting to me because all this hype around Kyle Pitts going into the season kind of died out and he absolutely lived up to it but it seems like everyone just stopped talking about it once the season started to come around and I think it's just because nobody was really talking about the Falcons that much in general and I hope everyone understands how good of a season he has and he was still the right pick for the Falcons the highest drafted tight end in a long long time if not ever they absolutely made the right choice with the impact he's made and he's gonna be an outstanding player for years and years to come but I don't think how people understand how rare and historic his season actually was. But what do you guys think? What do you guys think about Kyle Pitts and his season? Make sure to like this video if you like videos like these. Comment down below what you think and who you want me to cover next. And make sure to subscribe if you enjoy daily sports content. I appreciate you guys so much. Thank you so much for checking out the channel. And as always, I will see you all tomorrow. Peace.